Hey there, everybody. Nathan Elson here, and welcome back to another episode of How I Got the Shot. Now, for those of you who might be new here, what I do with this series is I take you behind the scenes of how I create some of my favorite photos, walk you through the process, give you all the light settings, the equipment, what I used, where I placed everything, just basically tie it all up in a nice little bundle and present it to you for future use, something to inspire, something to just give you some ideas moving forward with your photography. So that being said, this is the type of image that we're going to create today. Let's just get into it. So here we are in the studio and I'm running a pretty basic hard light mixed with soft light look. Now my key light is a Stropro optical snoot. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the optical snoots, I did an entire video all about the snoot, which I'll link up here. But Stropro actually came out with an entirely new snoot design, which I've been using lately. And I will be coming out with an entire video telling you all about, you know, what I like about it, what, uh, what changes were made from the original version to this, everything up in between all of that good stuff. So keep an eye out for that. But uh, yeah, for those of you who know my work, you know optical snoots, I'm, I'm a huge fan of them. I love the kind of creativity you can get with the light, everything that way. And so for this shot, I was using essentially just a little warehouse gobo. It essentially looks like warehouse windows. And that's how I'm able to create this effect in studio with actually out needing giant warehouse windows. And then just to bring the shadows up a little bit, I'm using my fill light, which is a 12 by 12 scrim with the pro photo lights firing into it. But I'll get into that in just a second. I'm gonna walk you guys through the key light, show you exactly what that looks like all on its own. Then I'll take you back into the fill light, show you what that looks like all on its own, and then combine it all together for the final result. So starting with my key light, I'm using an 8600 Pro with the Stro Pro optical snoot attached. And as I was saying, I'm using this little window, warehouse window looking gobo to create the shape on the backdrop. So when it comes to the positioning of this light, I wanted to mimic that sort of like midday high sun coming through a warehouse window look. So what I did was I positioned this light up high and then I angled it down so that the top of the modifier would be essentially falling at the model's shoulders while still you know, hitting her with the brunt of the light, just like it would if it was coming through a window and the top of the windowsill would be essentially reflecting onto the backdrop with just that kind of window shape. That's what I wanted to mimic. Now with this light on its own, as you can see, it's giving me the shape, but I'm losing a lot of detail in my backdrop. It's not pulling out those textures in that textured area. And that is why I end up using a fill light. So now that we've seen what the key light looks like all on its own, I'll take you guys through the fill. So for my fill light, I'm using two 8600 Pro heads with medium Pro Photo umbrellas attached. And that's firing through a 12 by 12 scrim. Now, do you need all of this gear for this fill light? Probably not. No, you could get away doing this a lot simpler, but I mean, I've already got all the gear in the studio. Why not use it? It's, it, I just, it's the gear that I use. So with that being said, this light is metered just to give a little pop of light. I don't want it to affect the shape of that window gobo that I have on my key light, but I do want to bring out some of the texture that's in that backdrop so that we're not losing all of that. So the way that I achieved that was metering my light to F 1.4 at 1 200th of a second at ISO 400. So that's three stops below what my main key light is. And all that's doing is it's allowing just a little bit of that shadow detail to come back into the image. So just to show you what the combination of the two look like, here is the key light firing all on its own. As you can see, like I said before, the shadows are a little bit too dark. And then here is my fill light firing all by itself, just bringing a little bit of that shadow detail back into the image. And when we combine the two images, well, this is what we end up with. All right, so now that we've seen how this hard light mixed with soft light works, I'm gonna take you guys behind the scenes on another little setup here that I did using basically the exact same style of lighting, but creating a completely different feel 
to the image. So as you can see, I've swapped out my textured backdrop for a plain white background. And then I've also taken my key light and just moved it over so that I was getting a little bit more coverage on the photo. I didn't want the light to be chopping off at her shoulders. I wanted it to feel like she was standing in front of some giant windows. So I just changed my positioning to account for that. Now I've also changed my shooting angle. So I'm coming more from the side and incorporating more of my studio into the image. And if you've seen my last video, again, this is just something that I really enjoy doing. I like tying in just little bits of environment into the image. It kind of gives it more of that editorial and behind the scenes, environmental type of feel to it. And so using the exact same type of lighting setup, here are some images that we made that feel nothing like the first set that we created. There you guys go, a really easy way to take some hard light, which has lots of shape to it, and then some soft light to pump in a little bit of fill just to bring out the details, combine them together just to make something that has a little bit more depth than if you just used one or the other. So that being said, hopefully you guys picked up something from this that you can use in your shoots going forward. If you have any comments or questions, use the comments box down below. That's what it's there for. Again, I appreciate you guys being here and I'll talk to you again very, very soon. Cheers.